can have a goal or a desire or a plan, but it requires some work. All right. What's up, everybody? Uh, it's Christopher Harris here, and I tell you, I am so excited. Um, the last few months have been absolutely unequivocally incredible uh, regarding uh, my book, Temporary Assignments, here. Um, you can go, of course, and get it online, get it at Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, and all of those kinds of things. Um, but it's been incredible uh, to hear uh, the incredible stories and the amazing stories that people have been sharing uh, in their lives about transition. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to be able to provide to you online, to all of our online partners and friends and family, um, are some practical tools and resources and conversations that you will hear all year long um, around particular areas of change and reinvention and how to navigate transitions. And you know, um, I talk about this quite a bit in the book where transition has, um, it, it, can, it can be an emotional roller coaster. Um, and so um, what we want to do today, though, I've got an amazing uh, gentleman online with me today, Mr. Orlando Haynes. How you doing, Mr. Haynes? Pretty good in yourself, Mr. Harris. I appreciate you having me. Oh, no, absolutely, man. Well, uh, you are well known and in this space around career development and progressing, uh, helping people to, uh, to really make sure that the foundation of their professional life and their careers um, are intact. And so we're going to spend just a few minutes um, talking about what that looks like. How do you navigate change and transition professionally? So real quick, just tell everybody real fast who you are and what you do and, and uh, even a little bit of how you got there. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, just like Mr. Harris said, my name is Orlando Haynes. Uh, I am a public uh, speaker in terms of career achievement speaking, uh, published author as well. I've been in the industry of uh, career development recruiting for about over 14 years now. Actually started in New York City, traveled to the Las Vegas area, and now oh, yeah. uh, now oh, yeah. here in uh, Tampa, Florida. So I have oh, a kind of a cross-culture, cross-country uh, level of experience from entry level to executive level uh, staffing and uh, career development and helping the folks become a better better uh, self in, in their profession. So and I own a company called the Inside Recruiter. I got I got to ask. So you said you, you did career development in Las Vegas? Yes, sir. Man, what kind of careers they got going on in Las Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. Yeah. Outside of the uh, the Las Vegas Strip, it's normal life. But uh, the okay. the one thing that it's known for is definitely it's it's the the nightlife there, and the heat, the extreme heat. But uh, it's a great great environment for a lot of professionals. There are a lot of people who grind and uh, who who hustle to make it to make a dollar over there. Did, did you interview? Did you interview and and uh, from a career development standpoint, help a lot of clergy? <laughs> 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 not at all, not at all. Unfortunately, I did I, I did not come across those folks, but um, you'd okay. be surprised. It's still on the professional level, and then you get a few folks who are just strictly want to be in that in that limelight on the strip. But uh, okay. overall, still, it was, a, it was a great environment. I was there for about six years. Okay, awesome. Tell me how you got into career development and how you got into this space. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually mentioned it in my book. Uh, it, it's funny because I was a candidate for another firm uh, back in New York. Coming out of school, I was an electronic technician. They called me for an interview process, and I was pretty much, um, uh, I was amazed at how they took the time to, to know who I was and what I liked and walk me through the entire process up to uh, a potential hire that I was going to be uh, picked for, a potential position. Uh, that position didn't go through, but long story short, six months later, they turned around and called me for an internal position. And wow. this is when in Manhattan. So from there, they introduced it as a, uh, as a sales position. And that really made the legs to go in and really see what uh, this whole business is. Mm. It's one of the very few careers that will give you a full business acumen. Uh, from start to finish, uh, dealing yeah. with executives, how to negotiate, uh, deal with all different kinds of ups and downs. And uh, from there, it's been uh, pretty successful. That's incredible. That's incredible. And so um, you felt the need then to say, man, let me, let, me help, let me help people as I've been helped, huh? Correct. Correct. From that, uh, it, it, I just kind of been drawn to it. I always like the mafia. It's hard to get out. Uh, when you do, they, it draws you back in. 
<laughs> That's hilarious. So let's 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 jump in a little bit more and talk a little bit about what um, what what transition looks like professionally for people. What are some of those dynamics and what are some of the things that you've seen um, that sort of catch people by surprise when it comes to this notion of of, trans, of transition? Well, some of the things in, in terms of career professionals, some people feel that uh, past experience is relevant experience. Mm. And I also explained in my book, which is really not the case, just because you know how to ride a bike 10 years ago doesn't mean that same bike is relevant today. Mm. So there are a lot of things that I teach and express that uh, you have to research, do your network and really tap into expanding uh, who you know, uh, expand your network so it's, it's pretty relevant to where it's going to give you the research that you need now. So some, whether it's be certifications, uh, go back to school, do some homeschooling that'll get you up to par of what's going on now. Uh, because no matter what client you go to, they want relevant experience. That's incredible. I mean, that's, that's, that's so mm -hmm. powerful to hear you say, and let me, I wrote it down here. So you said past experience is not always relevant experience. That's incredible. Um, because I Correct. think sometimes, I think sometimes, um, people don't realize that in fact, um, you have to commit yourself to always being a learner and, and sometimes being a learner mm -hmm. means that you've got to unlearn what you learned previously in order to, to, to reboot and re reset. Uh, so that you're operating um, in a relevant way today. That is correct. That is correct. So th those are some of the things I teach in a few partners of mine. I talk again, I talk about it in the book, but it's really about knowing what you can produce now. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I speak with up seekers daily mm -hmm. uh, and they'll mention, you know, I've done X, Y, Z several years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's to reaffirm them, like, that's great. You can make the transition, but you need to make the transition with competent skills that's going to be in today's market. It's like technology is not the same. The VCR is no longer relevant. Right. DVDs, and now we got, you know, iPhones, everything is downloadable. So if you're not upgrading your skills with your technology, then you become obsolete. Wow. So, I, you know, I, I want people to go and get your book, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But if you can, to make this very practical, what are, what are just two or, or three quick things? I know you mentioned earlier uh, networking is one of those. So beyond networking, mm -hmm. right? Because I also recognize uh, one of the things that I've been talking about temporary assignments um, over the last couple of months, uh, it's been amazing to me. Um, and I didn't, I didn't include a lot of this in the book. I may have to do this uh, at a, at a, in another context in another book, uh, but it's been amazing to me to hear uh, the different approaches that people take when you're an extrovert versus an introvert, uh, and even this whole notion mm -hmm. of what it means to be an ambivert and how you handle transition, right? And so um, networking, um, right. if, you're an, if you're an introvert or you're an ambivert, that net, hear the word networking, you're like all your bells and whistles are going off like, oh, Lord, I don't want to do that, right? So, so beyond the networking, <laughs> right, because we, we all know from a professional standpoint that that's necessary um, in, in many cases and places. Uh, give me and give our audience and those that are watching this just two or three quick, uh, quick mm -hmm. thoughts um, that, that would cause someone to be able to keep their iron sharp, right, or to keep themselves in a, in a, in a cutting mm -hmm. edge environment. Right. Uh, one, one thing would definitely be trying to find a mentor. Mm. So if, if you're trying to transition into a completely different industry, uh, using this, the resources we have now, like a LinkedIn, which is the major professional uh, resource for connecting and networking, but uh, using that resource to find a mentor to gain the knowledge you need to gain to be accessible in that interview process uh, or in, in your next stage of your, your career is crucial. So without a mentor guiding you, um, again, you can get lost in that nav in that navigation process. That's good. I would say the next thing would also the next thing would just be um, <laughs> you got to have the confidence. You got to have the boldness to to make that transition. Uh, really find what your why factor is for you to even take that leap uh, into uh, reinventing yourself. Uh, if you're doing it for a monetary gain, the likelihood of you being successful is is not uh is not going to be that high one thing uh jim Rohn said a famous uh motivational speaker he said the more you learn is the more you earn so like wow. you mentioned earlier 
learn, constantly learn, be a lifelong learner, read books, read, you know, read the Bible. Mm. That's the most motivation tool out there. Right. So <laughs> if you're reading all the concepts and principles there, yeah. it will motivate you to move forward. You got to know that uh, you got to have faith. You got to know that you're more than a conqueror. But if you don't have a true desire and don't know your why factor for why you're making that transition or reinventing yourself, you, you know, it's going to be a long and lonely path. So you got to know that information. Yeah. Sorry that. That's okay. Um, it's interesting because uh, a number of years ago, I, one of my mentors, uh, professional mentors, um, was a um, senior vice president um, in, of, of AT&T internationally. Uh, this guy, you know, this is one okay. of the guys that, that um, you know, uh, he, would, he, he was a, a, a platinum member of, of Delta, a number of other airlines. He flew commercially. He flew privately. Um, you know, he, he was one of the, the major players for AT&T. Um, and, and so he and I would get together for lunch once a month. Um, and it's interesting, though, because... Um, I learned through him how many uh, C-suite or, you know, Fortune 500 company executives and CEOs actually read the book of Proverbs mm. on a regular basis. Um, he, he, mm. literally, mm. he literally, he said he would spend 30 minutes a day reading the book of Proverbs. And he said he was more faithful wow. reading Proverbs than he was with that, actually going to church, which was to me just incredible um, to hear people that, that may be people of faith or not but they understand the principles that you talked about just now, even in terms of reading the Bible, right? Sometimes the Bible can be a mentor for people. So, you know, I don't want to make this a whole religious conversation, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, having a mentor is, is absolutely incredible. So really quickly, um, for our last uh, two and a half minutes that we have together uh, here in part one of this interview, uh, tell, me, tell me a little bit about your book and um, where people can get it. And uh, they want to get in contact with you. How can they plug in with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So my website is called the inside recruiter.com. Uh, you can find, uh, you can order the book directly from my website as well as Amazon or Barnes and Noble, uh, com. And what the title of the book is, you know, inside career tips, all job secrets to know. Mm. So I go through, um, from the interview process with the resume networking, the motivation behind everything. It's about 12 chapters, about 10, 10 to 12 tw chapters that kind of outline insight tips that uh, educate you also dealing with staffing firms because mm. uh, there are a lot of job seekers will go through a staffing firm nowadays to find a job so there's about 85 percent of jobs that are out there that go through agencies so, so mm. it's educating how did you say 85 percent hr folk about 85 percent wow yeah wow okay so it's either going to be a corporate recruiter you're dealing with or an agency recruiter, but for the most part, you will come across someone like myself uh, that will educate you. And I also help, my business also does, um, I do resume writing, career coaching workshops uh, for you know faith-based organizations as well. And then also do uh, um, speaking around certain a bunch of schools and high schools. Uh, so I, I kind of give everyone a well-rounded education and my motto really is uh, taking you from the job seeker to the sought after. Yeah, I saw that in the book. I love chapter five, man. Chapter five was, uh, I would call that the wisdom chapter, man. It has some quick <laughs> tips in there and it was just really right. dynamic. Right. So, yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to um, talk a little bit about change and reinvention and all of that. Um, this is part one of our conversation around temporary assignments and what your career looks like with change. I got Mr. Orlando Haynes, the inside recruiter himself on. And uh, if you guys tune in or go to, go to my YouTube channel, you'll be able to see uh, part two of this interview. So thank you so much, Mr. Haynes, for being on. Uh, I'll check you in just a few moments for the next interview. Thank you, Mr. Harris. I appreciate it, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. can have a goal or a desire or a plan, but it requires some work.